Man, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I absolutely do not like being biased, but when I say this, I mean it in an unbiased way. The Houston Texans have by far the best front seven in the NFL. And quite frankly, it's not even close. And I'm just being honest here. As I said, no bias whatsoever. Now, let's just look at the starters. I'm assuming the Texans are going to switch to a 4-3 defense because they have the personnel to do so. And it'd probably be better to do so because we'll be able to throw out our best players out there at the same time. Now... Let's start with DJ Reader. DJ Reader is our nose tackle. And he's around 330 pounds. Mostly powerful. He's a powerful guy. He eats up blocks. And for a big guy, he has some pretty good pass rush skills. I mean, people were asking who the Texans were going to use to replace Wolfwork. And some were even suggesting we draft a tackle, a nose tackle that is, but I mean, DJ Reader is right there. He is, without a doubt, last year he was our best rookie, and I'm just being honest, Will Fuller had a good first month, but he disappeared after September, so whatever, Reader was by far our best rookie last year. And I think he fits in right into the defense. He's a starter, honestly. He could have started last year, but we were using Wolf work more. But we were still kind of, you know, throwing him in there. And going into a second season, another offseason of workouts, another offseason of training. Reader's just going to get a whole lot better. And he's going to eat up blocks like a motherfucker. Now, let's move on to the guy... That for some reason, a lot of people seem to be forgetting. And that's J.J. Watt. Like, how the fuck do you forget about a three-time defensive player of the year player? About a player that really should have been MVP in 2014. Fuck you, Aaron Rodgers. You 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 shouldn't have been MVP that year. Anyways, how do you forget about Watt? I mean, the guy is single-handedly the best player in the NFL and again I don't like to be biased and that's an unbiased opinion why without a doubt is the best player in the NFL right now I mean the guy who the hell do you see in the NFL rushing from the interior getting 20 sacks a season you don't see that the closest I, I think I, I recall is the uh, Geno Atkins, he had 17 and a half, uh, I want to say three or four years ago. That's about as close as anyone ever got. And now it's the same year J.J. Watt had 20 and a half sacks. I mean, the guy is ridiculous. He's worse. You can move the guy all over the line. You need him to be an edge rusher, boom. You line him up in the edge. You need him to rush from the interior, boom. Line him up in the middle. Like, the guy is just so versatile. You could do so many things, and he's an absolute stud. And some people are saying, oh, his back injury, his back injury. Motherfucker, J.J. Watt's a different animal. He is going to be fine, and even if he wasn't fine, just his presence alone would make a huge difference. Like, if J.J. came back at, say, I don't know, 80%, 80% J.J. Watt is still by far... The best interior rusher. I'm sorry, Donald. I like you. You're good, Aaron Donald. But uh, you're not close to J.J. Watt. I'm sorry. Now, this brings us to the next person on the D-line. And that's Davian Clowney. (laughs) Clowney, in my opinion, is probably even more versatile than J.J. Watt. I think Clowney Clowney is faster. He might be stronger. He's probably more explosive. I mean, the guy, his only issue really is injuries, and in my opinion, those really 
injuries are kind of like bullshit-ish injuries, so I don't think we have much to worry about. I mean, Clowney can also do what J.J. Watt does. Edge rusher, line him up on the edge. You need him to go inside and be a D-tackle slash defensive end. He could do it all. The guy, for being quite small last season, he actually played 3-4 defensive end last season, which is similar to a 4-3 D-tackle, which basically means he's on the inside going up against guards and centers. A guy... Clowney's weight shouldn't be on guards and centers. But you know what? Clowney was. And you know what Clowney did? He had them, you know, just like a ragdoll. He was ragdolling these motherfuckers. He was pushing tight ends to his side with one hand. Clowney was all over the field. Clowney is just a beast. I mean, what else can you say? Now, the last... But definitely not least person on our D-line is Whitney Merciless. Whitney Merciless is, not going to lie, not as athletic, not as talented as both Clowney or Watt. But Merciless is a top-notch pass rusher. He's not as versatile as Watt or Clowney, but we don't need him to be. Because, you know what? We could do whatever we want with Watt and Clowney. So, you know... Merciless is a great player. He gets the job done. He's got great pass rush moves. And what else can you say about him? He takes advantage of his one-on-one opportunities. In my opinion, he's going to have way more one-on-one opportunities next season because of Watt, Clowney, and Reader eating up two blocks. So I do expect Whitney Merciless to have a double-digit sack season again. As well as Clowney and Watt. So, watch out the rest of the league. Watch out Tom Brady, Andrew Luck. You're garbage. Well, you're not garbage, but your O line's garbage. So, you might as well sit out the season. Mariota, you're injury prone. Sit out the season. Bortles, eh. You can stay. You suck. So, Brady, you're probably going to be bitching again in the playoffs. So, probably even more this time. Anyways, now let's move on to our linebackers. Brian Cushing, although he really isn't as good as he once was, he's still a pretty good linebacker. Not that good at covering. Probably the last person I would want out there in a passing situation out of our three starting linebackers. But you know what? He gets the job done. He gets tackles. You know, he's a probably not as physical as he once was, but he's a solid starter. He would be starting in most NFL teams right now if we're being honest so you know what Cushing is still a solid middle linebacker not good not great but solid with the talent around him the defensive line I think he might be outstanding next season we don't know yet but let's move on let's move on to the most underrated player in the NFL and that is Bernardrick McKinney I mean the guy last season he was doing everything last season people say that the Texans defense didn't fall apart due to Jadavion Clowney and although that is true another part of the reason our defense didn't fall apart after JJ was Bernardrick McKinney himself. The guy was everywhere doing everything. And how he didn't get a Pro Bowl nomination or whatever, didn't get nominated to the Pro Bowl is outrageous. It's blasphemous. The fact that he didn't, he wasn't first team all pro is also outrageous. The guy is a stud. And next season, pay attention to him if you haven't already. The guy is, in my opinion, one of the biggest pieces of the defense. Maybe even bigger than Merciless. He does lack a bit in coverage, but I do see him as an outside linebacker in our new defensive scheme that we're probably going to be running with Mike Rabel. 
So hopefully those cover issues do go away. Now let's go on to Mr. Zach Cunningham. I still can't believe this guy fell to the second round. This guy, in my opinion, was a top two inside linebacker. And without a doubt, he's a top two inside linebacker in the draft. I don't know how the hell Gerard Davis went ahead of him, ahead of him or the other guy. What was his name? From Ohio State. I forgot his name. But he went ahead of Sat Cunningham, and he really shouldn't have. Sat Cunningham, he does lack a little bit of upper body strength. But, you know, he has a lot of lower body strength. And if you haven't watched Brett Coleman's video already, highly recommend you go watch it. That just says it all about Sat Cunningham. This guy's going to dominate the league for years. Alongside Bernardrick McKinney. So. He can cover running backs. Which is something we really lack. On our team right now. A linebacker that can cover running backs. And Cunningham could do that. Alongside. McKinney. Now. One of the knocks on Cunningham is. He's not very good. In stopping the run. When they go to the edge. <laughs> But guess what? We got motherfucking Davion Clowney, J.J. Watt, and Whitney Merciless. Ain't nobody getting to the edge. So, running backs are going to be forced to run it down the middle. And guess what? They're going to meet D.J. Reader. They're going to meet someone down the middle. Teams aren't going to be able to run on us. Impossible. We're going to have the best run defense and the best pass rush next season. And it's not even close. And that's not even to mention other players that are also studs that are backups. Two, three that come to mind. Brendan Scarlett. Pretty good pass rusher. I'm pretty sure they're going to be mixing him in there with Clowney and Merciless. And we got Joel Heath. Joel Heath is a monster. Joel Heath was our second best rookie last season behind DJ Reader. And Joel Heath was undrafted. Like, what does that tell you? The guy is an absolute monster. And they have to, you know, rotate him into there. And another guy that comes to mind is Mr. Dylan Cole, undrafted free agent from this season. The guy is just a beast. I made a whole video discussing him. Go check it out if you want to know more about him. So you could definitely get him into the mix of the linebacker. He can also cover running back. So we could, you know, sub him out with Brian Cushing. Cushing. Cunningham and Bernardrick McKinney there on third down situations, passing situations. We can have them all out there. Or we could just take one, probably take McKinney out in general. Have Cunningham and Dylan Cole on third and long passing situations. But, yeah, we got the best front seven in the NFL and it's not even close. You know, make sure to comment down what you think of our beast of a front seven. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.